So here is that info peel that um, I was talking about. This was created by um, Karen Fong and Mark Gardner uh, for the Lincoln Center uh, for the Performing Arts in New York City. And it's basically kind of like an interactive billboard in, in a way. Uh, it has motion graphics on the screen as well as um, a place for information to be easily plugged into the composition so that people that are walking by or people that are driving by can actually get updates from the sign of what's going on that day. So like I said, it's kind of like a, a billboard with a screen and they call it an info peel. Uh, let's see, moving on. Um, another example of interactive design is a building in Japan that basically had QR codes built into its surface. And a QR code is called a quick response code. It's something that you would scan with your phone and then it takes you to another website or some other video or application or information. Um, and they actually broke new ground with this building when they did this. It's kind of a new idea really for 2009. And it Basically, if you scan these codes off the side of this building, it would show you like the building's hours of operation, sales inside, the sales going on inside the building, and then even recent treats, tweets by users who are walking the hallways. Um, and it's basically kind of, the designers were thinking of creating kind of an alternative to billboards. And it doesn't, the one thing about this is it doesn't push the content onto anyone. Um, you have to actually, as a user, go out and seek it by actually scanning um, the QR code. So this was done by Terra Design Architects. This is the North Building, 2009. Tachikawa, Japan. Um, so that's, that's the building there from the book. And then there are also websites are a form of interactive design as well. Um, the Sonic C website is basically website that presents information about the movie that was made, The Sonic Sea, and it kind of basically shows the problem of ocean noise and how that affects whales and their communication and the ecosystem of the ocean. And basically the website kind of featured these slow moving graphics over a blue color scheme that was kind of a peaceful um, scene. And then voiceovers play over the background sound of waves. And then you can scroll down and learn um, in sections of the site um, with words and text, clickable links, more information about how to take action, that kind of things. So it the information kind of unfolded clearly and it didn't overload the user, but it was a, definitely a very interactive site at the time. And this was actually made in 2015. Um, I'll show the still here. So it looked like something like this. Um, I actually went to the site and it is no longer um, featuring the same. They must have redone they must have redone the site because it doesn't have um, motion graphics on the site anymore. But this is the still from the book. Um, Henry Chang was the designer. So we're going to look at a smartphone app uh, called Inks, and it's an interactive game based on uh, pinball. I don't know if you guys have played pinball, but um, it's based on pinball. And it's basically vi virtual pinballs that hit co the colored edges of areas to release um, kind of a flowing digital paint um, that can be controlled. So let's see. And you can actually tilt your device and that can actually um, kind of change and blend the speed of the ball, the, the speed of the ball and the blending of the colors, I guess. So here's that uh, still from the book. Actually, really beautiful game. Um, really well designed. Um, three stills, I think, you know, put next to each other, basically. So this is, you know, one still from 
the game, another still here and another still here. And it, as you can see, I think this must be the path the ball took, um, making these lines and it must have hit here and spilled the orange out. So I think these, these paint, this paint almost spills out wherever, um, whenever a ball hits the edge. So it's kind of a neat idea. I actually have a little bit of a, oops, keep on trying to do that, a little bit of a movie or we can see kind of a little bit closer what it looks like if we take a look at it on YouTube. So, so here's kind of how it looks. Soundtrack. So, um, moving on, uh, we're going to go into industrial design, and this kind of has to do with more like how everyday products are designed. Um, so industrial designers work to make these products more beautiful, useful, and sustainable. Um, and we'll be looking at some objects today. Um, that use technology and cutting edge design and utility as well. So um, tablets and smartphones, all those handheld devices basically kind of have their origins in the first transistor radio that was that came out in 1957. The Sony Corporation um, released the TR610 uh, transistor radio, and it basically was a handheld speaker um, and it had an antenna on it and you could listen to the radio on it. It was probably mostly AM radio. Um, and then you could choose the color, which was kind of cool. And um, more than 2 million of these sold. And there's a, a large loop at the back as well so that you could set it on a table, as you can see here. And this is a nice looking device, really. I mean, it's a really well designed, beautiful piece of equipment here. Um, so, yep, this is a TR610 transistor radio from 1957. Um, the Sony, Sony was actually invented near the time of the release of this um, TR610, and it really did help to facil facilitate global sales, and Sony Corporation really became very popular because of this. Um, and then in the 1970s, the company um, made miniature headphones and then used new cassette technology and put that out as the Walkman. I don't know if you guys have ever seen an old school Walkman, but this is actually the first model that Sony put out there. And this is an example of industrial design as well. Um, you know, they put all of the buttons on the side probably for utilitarian purposes, probably makes more sense to have them on the side. Um, plus one side probably needed to be available to change the cassette out, and then the other side probably needed the speaker on it. Um, and then here's the headphones with the foam um, earpiece. So this is the first Walkman model. It was released in 1979, and it's basically a portable cassette player. And it really did change the listening habits of people throughout the world. And it sold for about $150 at the time. And if we adjust for in inflation and all that, that's today that would be around 500 bucks, which is quite a bit if you think about it. Um, yeah, and then eventually, you know, they Sony moved on and eventually MP3 players entered the scene, um, specifically with the iPod. Um, and now, we just use our phones. So it's kind of slowly, the personal listening device has really slowly evolved. So we're gonna move on to the BMW Concept e-scooter. And basically when lithium ion batteries were um, basically invented, 
this kind of allowed BMW to come out with a scooter that has an electric motor. And it kind of has like a, a really interesting design to it. And it, it obviously it lacks a gas tank and a tailpipe. So we'll take a look at it right here, which is, you know, interesting because we're used to seeing a gas pipe, a, a gas tank and a tailpipe. But obviously if it has an electric motor, it doesn't need those things. And um, this model is known to accelerate more quickly than a gasoline power motorcycle of similar size. So it actually has quite a bit of speed. Um, and it's really silent and it, it produces zero emissions. And this was made in, uh, let's see, 2011, I believe, in Germany. Um, and this is a really an example of products um, that designers are creating, industrial designers are creating to encourage green thinking. So another example um, of kind of a mundane device is a chair it's used for sitting, but Andrew Jones kind of rethought its parameters when he came up with the battery chair. Um, the overall shape does suggest a flower and the blue color kind of refers to the bloom of the Scylla plant which flourishes locally in the northeastern United States. Um, and it's lightweight, stackable, and cartoony. And it, um, it kind of has, the chair suggests informality and relaxation. Um, so let me pull that up. Here's the battery chair, 2014, New York. Um, and Jones actually designed this for the National Park Service to install in Grassy Battery Park, the southern tip of Manhattan in New York. And it also, um, it's this park hosts an outdoor market, concerts, and movie screenings, so they needed these parks. So the Park Service commissioned the chair from Jones after an open competition for a new chair design. And they actually had 679 entries from around the world for the chair design, but Jones won. Um, and it's it, basically, they checked all the prototypes for comfort. And they found that the battery chair encourages a relaxed posture. And they thought it was the best type of chair for the setting. So that's basically the chapter 11 design principles um, chapter from our book. Um, and as I said, we encounter design, graphic design really frequently in our lives. And it's a creative process that employs art and technology to produce visual compositions and objects that can attract, inform, persuade, delight, and assist us. So yeah, this is the first lecture. Hopefully I can get a little faster with these lecture lectures um, in the future so that you, you know, not having to watch quite so much um, lecture on the video. But I mean, honestly, it's about the same amount of time that you would spend in class listening to me. So um, anyway. I think we can wrap this up and hopefully this helps you with the quiz at home and obviously read the book, go over all the terms and take your quiz before this Sunday coming up. Um, you'll see that in the content area of Brightspace. So just keep checking Brightspace. Um, and I think this week with chapter 11, we'll also be doing another project and I will make a video on that as well. All right. Talk to you later.